An ESFJ has opportunity to grow in their personality, to develop themselves, and to really become more. And this is part of the benefits of the MBTI, is having an ability to grow and to expand one's personality. So let's look at the general characteristics of an ESFJ and their general description. They tend to be warm-hearted, conscientious, cooperative, and they really need harmony in their environments, both their work and their home. They're going to work with great determination to establish harmony in every situation. Now, they like to work with others to complete tasks, but they need to do it accurately and on time. They're loyal, and they're going to follow through in even small matters. They notice what others need in their daily lives, and they're going to do everything they can to really provide it. They do want to be appreciated for who they are and what they can contribute. Others really see this kind of a personality as being sociable, outgoing, enthusiastic, and energetic. They're organized and orderly, and they're really committed to preserving all kinds of traditions. They're energized mostly by their interaction with others, and they're generally really genuinely interested in other people's lives and their concerns. They make people feel important, and their structure is a situation that they're most comfortable in because they enjoy creating order and schedules. They like to do things in a very traditional way, something that's pro tried and true, right? And with the sake of harmony, um, ESFGs are going to agree with just about anything because they have very strong values, though. They express clearly and confidently what they think when it is appropriate. Their greatest values tend to be family and social ties, and they're really good about belonging and jumping in and participating in celebrations and traditions. Some areas of growth really deal with their preferred preferences, which are sensing and feeling. If they have not developed sensing, they tend to take in much information or not take in very much information before they make decisions, and they're going to jump to conclusions way too quickly. And afterwards, they may even impose those decisions on everyone around them. If they don't develop the feeling side, they tend to be very tentative and uncertain, and they're going to accept the judgments of others too quickly without really thinking about their own preferences or contributions. They need to feel appreciated, and when they are not appreciated and they do not get to use their gifts in a very good way, they're going to doubt themselves, and they focus entirely on the other people. They worry, they feel guilty, they become controlling, and they really try to push for harmony. They're going to say things like, we're all going to get along. They become really overly sensitive, and they imagine slights where maybe there weren't any to begin with. So an ESFJ really prefers their sensing and feeling preferences, but they still need to give some attention to their non-preferred thinking and intuitive parts. When they neglect those too much, they're going to find that it's difficult to acknowledge and deal with the truth of problems, especially when it is regarding people that they care about. They're going to support people in charge and standard operating procedures too much without much of a critical eye, and they're not going to see some wider possibilities of alternative ways of doing things. With great stress, they find themselves really critical of others and of themselves. They will have negative thoughts and opinions, and these thoughts and opinions are going to trouble them greatly.